I never thought I would see what we're seeing today. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the manifesto of a mad black conservative. And I'm coming at you guys because I'm mad. I'm mad as a mug, man. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. How long will you simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery? And fools hate knowledge. Instruct the wise, and they will become wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will add to their learning. Proverbs 4, 7 says this. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. <laughs> get wisdom. Something to think about. This episode is part two of Take Heed America. Warning comes before destruction. Number one, I called what we see in the flesh. This episode is what we cannot see in the flesh. And I want to call it the Funny Willis effect. Because if anybody knows what's going on right now with the Funny Willis trial, the prosecutor that's trying to prosecute Trump down in Georgia right now, and all the crazy mess that she's just been caught up in herself, sleeping with a married man, uh, trying to hide it, really a fraud. But you know what? Whatever she got going on in her life, that's her. And that's not what I'm uh, trying to call out. That's not the reason why I'm calling this the Funny Willis Effect. I'm calling this the Funny Willis Effect of how the church, the black church, these churches that she's going to, and how they're inviting her in. They're making this like a spiritual thing. But they're, man, it's so disgusting. So that is basically what the devil does to us. He spins things and he works in the backdrop and he makes things look so good. And if you're not aware of his schemes, then you will get tricked. Because although we have a serious and imminent threat against our flesh, abroad, right here on our own soil, Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, these people that has come into our country and set up shop in every major city with stockpiles of weaponry, just waiting on the word. Man, even though we have all that happening in the flesh, this episode is about the real enemy. Because our, our wrestle is not against flesh and blood, but our wrestle is against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. We have an enemy, a terrorist far greater than those who scream death to America and who burn our flags in their streets. We have an enemy who seeks to kill our sons and daughters, our spouses, our mothers and fathers, and everyone that we love. We have an enemy who seeks to steal our hopes and dreams, our peace and joy, and the truth that has the power to save our souls, and who seeks to destroy our souls and our spirits and the very purpose in which we were created for which is to be fruitful and multiply and prosper in the presence and perfect fellowship and communion with our God and Father. We have been warned by the word of God that we have an adversary, the devil, that prowls around like a roaring lion seeking for someone, anyone, to devour. And we've also been warned to be vigilant and to keep alert, to stay awake, and to be on guard and of sober mind so that we can recognize when we're being bombarded and bamboozled and infiltrated by his deceitful caresses because he masquerades himself as an angel of light while he seeks to cast us into total darkness. <laughs> 
kind of like kind of like many of the policies on the Democratic ticket today, which are policies that are none other than the manifestation of the very spirit that's roaming around to devour us. And I know I might get a little, <laughs> I, might get, I might get a lot of heat from that. But I tell you what, you take a look at them for yourself. Same-sex marriage. What is that? What is that? <laughs> Are you serious? Are you serious? Man, if you ask me, that's a tactic from the enemy. To break up our families, manhood, womanhood. And to just go against the very nature of God, the very laws of God. That's what it is. And that is on the Democratic ticket. It is not on the Republican side. And I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm just somebody who uses not only common sense, but I try to have a little wisdom. Because the Bible says if you ask God for wisdom, that he will give it. And so I took him up on his word. And he started making me see all types of stuff. And I think I, I thank God for that. Because if you're not familiar or made aware with his tricks and tactics, how can you be on guard? How do you know what to be vigilant of? I mean, the enemy, yeah, he has been using the same three tactics ever since the beginning of time. The desire of the flesh, the desire of the eye, the pride of life. Hmm. And in the times that we're living in right now, we better try to understand the methods of our enemy more than ever. Because he is a slick, slimy, sap tapper, man. Man, this is what this, this episode is about. It's about bringing to light the, the schemes of the enemy. The Bible says this. And, and, and basically, you know, I, 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 I do have this podcast to speak a lot of what's going on in the political world but at the same time political world is not the overall ruling force there there's another judge that's uh, way more supreme than the supreme court justices and that's what i want to talk about today you know i want to talk about our enemy that's behind the threats that we are seeing today because you can go out and buy all the guns you want to. You can go out and get yourself a bunker. You can go out and get yourself a five-year supply of food or whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, it is the Lord who protects us. And if he's not protecting you, then you are not protected. And the Lord is the one that has been protecting America. America, contrary to the beliefs of a lot of people that I've talked to, is and was, like I said on my last podcast, a Christian nation. Once again, yes, I understand there was slavery. I didn't say America was perfect. I said it was Christian. I'm a Christian, but if you follow me around all day, you're going to find something to point the finger at me behind. And that's just facts. That is just facts. But I tell you this. You know what? Matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it like this, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Obama's words sink in again. The words that he used near, during his keynote address in 2006. He was smart enough to know what America's origins is. He said, we are no longer a Christian nation. At least not just. We are also now a Jewish nation. A Muslim nation, a Buddhist nation, and a Hindu nation, and a nation of non-believers? He said, that's what we are now. And I'd have to agree with him. He knows the history of America. It used to mean something when a president was not Christian. Or somebody that was running for president. Now, hmm, don't seem to mean too much. But I tell you this. America is being breached right now because the founding fathers of America paralleled or they, they consecrated America as a city on the hill. And they vowed that America would be like ancient Israel. When America was created, um, 
Israel wasn't even on the map. Israel didn't come back into existence till 1948. So when America w was birthed, Israel was only written in the Bible. Well, it was part of history as well. But America is a nation who has taken the ideologies of the Christian faith and made it its number one faith. And the Bible says that those who bless Israel will be blessed. And those who curse Israel will be cursed. Well, America has been blessed more than any other nation. Well, America began to slip in the 1950s, 60s. It began taking its, the word of God out of its schools. All these things are precursors and they're, they're all identifiable to the tactics of the enemy and what he does because he has he he has steps when he's knocking a nation or a person off course but god also sends warnings i don't know if y'all ever read a book called the harbinger by uh, jonathan Cohn, but it is an amazing amazing book he talks about when america was hit during 9-11 that he went down and he was praying at ground zero and all of a sudden he started to the, these these different signs, these different warnings or objects begin to pop out at him that were harbingers. Harbinger means warning. There were these these same nine harbingers that happened to ancient Israel were beginning to surface themselves on American soil. And it's just I mean, it's, it, is a, it is just an overwhelming revelation. It will just make you say, wow. And you can research it and, and read the Bible and be like, wow, this really happened. Yes, it really happened. But well, the thing is, these were warnings that God was giving America. And it seemed like at that time that America was going to re was, was going to have this revival. But America didn't have a revival. But start slipping in uh, to, to sin more and more and more. And these harbingers has progressed since then. And a matter of fact, in 2019... I remember Jonathan Cunn because, now listen, uh, you know, I don't praise no man, no none of that. But I just want to say this. In 2009, well, whenever he, re I read that Harbinger and I was like, wow, you know, he is somebody who God has allowed to make the connections of the secrets, really, man, the, the mysteries. And to put, to dot I's and to cross T's and to say, wow, man, God is really at work. And in 2019, Jonathan Kahn, he came on and he said, whatever you have in your life that you need to get out, don't go into 2020 with it. Because 2020 will be, will be like no other year that we have seen. And all through 2019, y'all, man, I was struggling. Man, I was drinking. I was smoking weed. Man, I'm telling you, man, I was, I was just, man, I was just going through a time. And I started getting scared, man, because I was like, man, I tried to quit like three different times. I was like, man, you know what I'm saying? I was praying a lot. I was always praying, man, Lord, man, take this away from me, you know. And uh, so, I mean, I was I was truly I was scared, man. So New Year's night in the countdown, I'll never forget it. Man, I, I went to my family. I'm sitting outside in the car. I just got me a little sack of bud. I was like, man, but you know what? I was so afraid. I was so afraid of God. I was afraid that I couldn't quit, but I was afraid of God too. You know, and I and 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 I took what Jonathan said to heart because all this other stuff that I researched about these harbingers that happened to ancient Israel and was now replaying themselves on American soil, I took that I took it very serious. And so that night, I'm sitting there Hey, you know what I'm saying? The countdown coming. I'm like, man, I still got my last beer can. <laughs> I'm talking about, man, I'm blowing, blowing, blowing. Man, I'm talking about five, four, three, two, one. I wasn't even in the house. I'm trying to get that last puff in. And I had probably, you know, about a third of a blunt left. 
And I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? I put that joker out. And, and I was still afraid because I didn't even want to go into the new year with, with my mind impaired. But I did. That's how, that's how, that's how a tough of a time that I was having to let that stuff go. So the next morning, man, I ain't going to lie. I'm using the bathroom. I'm sitting there. Man, and here come that old devil. Man, I'm thinking about that little piece of blunt. I had a little sack left, too. And, man, I used to always get up in the morning. One of the first things I do, man, go out and hit that bud. Man, I get up. Here come that old devil. Man, you know you got that little piece of blunt left. Just smoke that and that be it. That be it. I was sitting there and it was a temptation. And I said, no. Man, as soon as I said that, it was like, Phew. man, God just like Phew, rushed in. The Holy Spirit just like took over. And I didn't have a desire for it. I didn't have a desire to drink. Man. And then look what happened in 2020. COVID. Hmm. So anyways, man, America has been going down this road and it all stemmed from America has turned its back on the God that it once knew, which is Yahweh. It's turned its back. And the Bible talks about when a person or a place or a country or a nation has been washed clean, then it turns its back and go back to its own vomit. When that demon come back and see, oh man, it was just dealing with one, but he going to see that it's empty and he going to come back and he going to bring seven of his buddies. And so that's what has happened to America. And just last year, before it even happened, Jonathan Cohn was talking about the breach. And then what happened? I mean, even before Joe Biden opened up the borders, and here we go. We got this breach. So America is vulnerable for attack. And that's the reason why this is a part two, because it goes hand in hand with exactly what we're seeing and what's happening in the physical. It's it, it all has to do with what's playing out in the spiritual. What's been keeping America safe all this time is not that America is so great, not that America is so is so good and on guard. And nah, man, it's been God's protection. God has been protecting America. America has been the country that has sent people from, since I can remember, all over the world, evangelizing to them, going to different tribes, evangelizing the tribes, the word, the good news, the gospel, the word of the real living God, the God who was dead, and behold, he is alive and well today. And he said that those who believe on him can also be alive and well again. Because it's appointed to every man wants to die and then judgment. But some will not taste death. And I think that that time is coming where we, where, where, where some of us will be caught up in the air. But. Anyways, I'm going to try to go ahead and get through this because I really don't want to make no long podcast. But all I'm doing is blowing this trumpet and I'm just trying to tell somebody, man, I'm trying to tell I'm trying I'm trying to put these pieces together with the Holy Spirit is showing me because I'm not that smart. So the Holy the Holy Spirit has to be showing me. I just want to I just want to look at some of how we've even gotten into this situation and i think i have to do this because i know a lot of people are going to be pointing the finger at me saying well how can you say that about a democrat i'm a christian and i vote democrat hey man i'm not i'm not i'm not knocking that you not a christian i'm not saying that you are not but i tell you this a lot of the christians that i talk to that vote democrat like man Either they know that they're going against the will of God, they don't care, or they're not really Christian at all. And so, man, I ain't pointing no fingers. I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. Because, man, what's going on within the Democratic Party right now is, man, it is out of there. Right after Biden made president, let me tell you this, man. In 2021, the Democrat from Missouri 
Democratic Representative Emanuel Cleaver, he opened up the prayer on the U.S. House of Representatives. And, and, and when he closed his prayer, he said, a man and a woman. This is a Democrat. And what are they behind? They're behind, man, this abortion thing. Man, you don't think that that breaks God's heart? I believe that that's one of the biggest. We don't have the right to kill no baby. I don't care what scenario you can conjure up in your mind to murder. Because that's what it is. To take the life of an unborn is murder. There's no way around it. That is what it is. And... We so quick to talk about this race and how black lives matter. Yeah, black lives do matter. But like Jonathan Cunn said, what about all the, all, the, all the black lives that's being killed in the womb before they have a chance to take their breath? It's not a piece of flesh, not a lump of flesh. This is a human being that we're talking about. And where God has given life, because let me reiterate, we can plant the seed and we can water it, but God is the one that gives life. He's the one that makes it grow. So if he's permitted growth, who are we to come along and say, God, you're wrong. Let's kill. It is the evil that's inside of our own hearts. And the same way with this same sex marriage crap. And let me tell you something. Every time, if you read that Bible, every time a civilization in the Bible has reached the point where homosexuality is prevalent, judgment, judgment. The Bible says that the disciples asked Jesus, say, how will it be in the, in, the, in the end days? He said, it'll be as it was, as it was in the days of Noah. People be eating and drinking and Basically going about their own little merry little ways and not even thinking about God. The one that's waking them up every single morning. I don't know about you, but that don't make no sense to me. I think about God every single day. I talk to God every single day. Hmm. Maybe it's because I've had some things that's done happen in my life that really forces that. When you have near-death experiences... Like I have out there in them streets, almost getting killed, having to be brought back to life. Man, that kind of stuff right there, man, it makes you think about the more important things in life. And that's your soul. And that's the soul of your children and the soul of everybody that you love. And as you get closer to God, you'll start loving everybody that way. And you'll really start feeling how I'm starting to feel right now. That's the reason why I'm doing these podcasts. You'll start loving everybody and you'll start loving life. And yeah, it is so sad for somebody to get raped and get pregnant. But I'm not going to be the one to say kill that baby. <laughs> not me. That blood ain't fist to be on my hands. Even if it was my own daughter, even if it was my own wife. You talking about a, a woman's choice. Come on, man. That's one of the most ridiculous things that I've ever heard. That is a lie straight from the enemy. And people better wake up and snap out of it, man. And I'm serious. And I'll tell you this right here, too. Man, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be talking about the enemy and how he's masquerading around. And I done got on this Democratic Party. I tell you, I guess... Because he is working hard through the Democratic Party right now. And he got, oh man, it's just heartbreaking, man. It's just so heartbreaking. But all people got to do is, for one, ask God for wisdom, read his word, and you will be able to see the lies that the devil hurls at us. So beware, okay? Beware. Watch out. Man. I just pray for y'all out there to put on the armor of God. Let me say this and I'm going to get off because I already done went a little bit longer than I wanted to. But you think about the armor of God. You got the belt of truth. You got the shoes of peace. You got the breastplate of righteousness. 
You got the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You got the shield of faith. You have those different elements that God has given us for warfare in the spiritual. And each one of those that I just named, God gives them to us as a gift. But we can react. We can act on all of them. We can choose to walk in peace. We can choose as peace. We can choose, you know, to walk in righteousness. All of them, if you think about it, every last one of them. But the one, the most important one that guards our head, our cranium, is put on the helmet of salvation. There is nothing that we can do to get God's salvation. It is him alone. There's nothing we can do to put on the helmet of salvation. He puts that, puts that on us. God chooses us. We don't choose him. And that is the truth. And so I just want to pray for wisdom for everybody under the sound of my voice. And I pray that something wakes up inside of you to make you want to get mad and do something. Because it is time. We are at war. And our enemy seeks to devour us. And now, what's been playing out in the spiritual is manifesting itself right before our very eyes. I never thought that I would see gay marriage in my lifetime. I, would, I never thought I would see what we're seeing today. Mm. Israel, they went to Hinnom and they passed their children through the fire. They sacrificed them to idols. They sacrificed thousands. America, we have sacrificed millions. Where America went out to evangelize, now America is the number one leading nation in pornography. We're pushing other nations to get involved in the same sex lie, abortion, America is a country now that need to be evangelized too. We need evangelists to come over here. So if you consider yourself a man or a woman of God, don't get mad at me for just spitting it, okay? I'm just telling you what's going on. If you're saying, hey man, I'm voting Democrat. Hey man, you need to look. What's more important? Is it God or is it race as a black person? What's really got you going? What's really got you going? Or... Or your values and what you care about and what you love, is it lining up with what God care about and his values and what he love? Or is it lining up with what you love and what you want? And instead of us going back to this whole race thing, how about we use the opportunity that we have right now to empower one another on a positive note instead of because I don't know about y'all, but it makes me mad when I see, when I hear, oh, man, this person's racist. This person's racist, man. They done this and they done that. Hey, man. Yeah, it still exists. But listening to this stuff all day, man, just just gonna piss you off. Me, I'm a real estate entrepreneur. OK, <laughs> right now I ain't doing the best. I just lost about uh, quite a bit, <laughs> but I'm on the bounce back. So but my whole point is, man. When I changed this, it started to change my life. Nobody held me back. And even if they tried, man, I just stepped right over them. Because I don't let them hold me back. I don't let them hold me back. Love y'all, man. Till next time. Beware of the enemy. Watch yourselves in the flesh because they're here. But the main thing is watch yourself in the spiritual. Because that devil want to take you out. And when he take you out, he play for keeps. These bodies, they may pass on. But if your soul go to the Lord, then you good in the hood, man. But if your body gone and your soul go to hell, psh, you out of there. Just wake up, man. There's a generation in the pure in their own eyes and it's, it's not washed from their filthiness. There's a generation no lofty of their eyes and the eyelids are lifted up so prideful they are. There's a generation who teeth are like swords and their jaws and teeth is knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Oh, Psalm 15, one oh, said, Who shall abide in that tabernacle? Who shall dwell in that holy hill? Here goes the answer, y'all. He that walk.
walketh uprightly. He that work in righteousness is speaking truth in his heart. He that don't back by his neighbor. He doesn't take a bribe from the wicked. He never goes against the innocent. He lives in the ways of the Lord and he follows all the Lord's commandments. He delights in the laws of the Lord day and night and he meditates that he shall never be moved. His faith shall never be shaken. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for the righteous. Check it out, y'all. Hey. It don't matter if the haters belittle me. I know you love me, Lord. You said you'd deliver me. Hey, it don't matter if the haters belittle me. I know you love me, Lord. You said you'd deliver me. So I call upon There's a true story of a soldier that went to war during World War II with only one weapon. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And as he single-handedly saved 75 men and pulled them to safety, he kept saying one thing, one more, Lord, one more. And so that's my heart desire today. That's the reason why I'm making this podcast, to say one more, Lord, one more. So hit that like button, subscribe, and share this content if you've been blessed. Thank you.